Um, so we should have a student here for May. She's in the digital, what's the name of the class? Digital media. Digital media class. Something you can take when you're a junior senior, by the way. It's a great, great class. Mr. Paul does it. Um, anyway, you guys forgot to mention it yesterday. I totally forgot to mention it. My bad. Um, you guys are kind of like famous at the district office. We're going to the superintendent for the power of the district came in. And they were really impressed with you guys. Um, that would be with you. Um, <laughs> um, and so they kind of, they knew I was doing this lesson plan. And they emailed me a couple weeks ago and said, hey, can we film it? Um, and the topic, can you do mature, please? The topic um, is one of those lesson plans that we do about like life skills. And it's actually really fun. I did it with my first period. It's a really fun activity. We'll have a debate and see in a second. Um, so anyways, she's going to be filming you just be yourselves, okay? You just be yourselves, okay? This is, we're not going to be fake and be like, well, actually, Miss Serrano is right now. Okay, you just do your thing, of course, be, try to be as awesome as you always are, okay, please, but you just be yourself. And what they're going to do is toss a bill that you know, okay, and if they do use it, um, I'm going to get permission slips to make sure your parents are okay with you being famous. Um, let's be mature, please, okay? I do expect all the personal to come back to okay? Unless it's a serious issue, and I'll talk to your parents. Um, but um, if, if we end up using it, I'm going to talk to the district person, then we'll send out permission so to get your family's permission. Um, if I just want to film it, see how it goes, um, and then...
some control over control over who's that? Then how can we have control over life even though some people can't? How can we build up on Okay? So here's the philosophical chair's rules. Okay? And actually, I'm gonna switch you up to your teams first. But I need a huge favor. Okay? My first period was very brutal with this, I was very proud of them. I hope this has to be too. A lot of students chose me. Okay? Can I have one side of the room volunteer? We're not saying that's what you think. Role playing and representing side. Okay? Cool. You know, I have Ethan on this side. I think I'm just going to make this side side in. Okay? Sorry, guys. So, <laughs> I know Ethan's like, sorry, guys. Watch out now. No! You know what? I think it's really powerful to put ourselves in other shoes. Because I've heard some good examples. I think some people say, and you know what? Maybe maybe I shouldn't have called them out like that. Right. Good point. Am I might a little too many, but I'm more to help me. Be A. Right? Well, my hair. Right. Okay. What are you going to do? Side A. Pick up your desk and have it face the wall. Boom. Just do that really quick. The right go from here out. And just have it face the wall. That's it. Perfection. Now you guys have to get it.
Someone else is single. Oh, okay. On the other side. The other side. Wait, the B is A is go. Someone else, someone else. A little bit. What do you all think about that? About, you know, if you grew up in your uncle, your dad, your mom have been involved in some kind of gang affiliation, is that going to determine your future life? What do you want to think about that? Jesus. Or is it not? Awesome. Yeah. I think, yeah, because you're still going to feel something about it. You might still have some pain in your head about it. You can't do it. Actually, no. Because you want to do better than your parents. And if they make bad choices, you want to you want to show them that you can do better. And I'm pretty sure they're not going to want you to do it. When they have a question like that, they want you to be as strong as I can have you speak as loud as you can. These vents are so loud. Sorry. So I'm hoping you can go. Excuse me. A. I have a question. Can, yeah. we, can we come back with a question? Sure. Okay. Let me see what the question is. A, we all have to say about this. You can make a choice. What do you think about that? Can you make a choice in that kind of environment? The gangs are like the What do you, uh, your side A. <laughs> Put yourself in the shoes of a size A person who believes that their situation is just going to determine everything. Are we still stuck on the topic of gangs or can we like move it? Oh, you can totally move it. A needs to go. Remember, you believe your environment and circumstances determines everything in your life. We can move on from the gangs now, but that was a great example to get started with. It was great. We move on to another one, though. Side A, let me help you with this. Um, what if you are struggling to live, and then so basically you do get involved with gangs, and you have to do that to make money to survive? That's your only choice. Side B? Hey, repeat what you said. I didn't even hear you. Okay. What if. Like you're in a situation, a predicament, a scenario, and you don't have nothing to eat, and there's a gang right there willing to give you drugs, supply you, to, so you can make money and eat and survive, and have clothes on your back and a roof over your head, and that's the only way you're gonna survive. Try and you didn't have, a, you didn't have an education, you didn't have anything. That's why you try to live everything for everything, and then if you can, then just try whatever you can. Just don't go to the wrong path because it messes up your life. <laughs> well, maybe selling drugs is faster than kind of like since you're in a bad situation, you gotta be like, like you're poor, what what job will accept you to make money besides the gates? Uh oh, uh, inside, no, inside, inside yeah. B. <laughs> Go ahead, Angel. Is that what you said? What? what do you mean by I McDonald's? I didn't say it. Who said it? Oh, oh, Joe. Yeah. Sorry. Joe, go ahead. What do you mean?
You can't get a job? Alright, so we're talking about a dog, alright? It's the thing about it's the favelas, right? So let's think about that movie clip whenever like people that didn't have money and they were like struggling to survive, they wanted a kiss and have a fork, a metal fork. So uh the favelas they were struggling, they were killing each other for money, food, anything they do to survive. They take a tree and stuff in order to survive they would steal them for their family and stuff. But uh just like the lives that were lost too. Yeah. Um, Wait, can I, I think it's a really connection with Wait, can I play what you trying to now, now you can yes. Okay. So I, I think you have favelas. a good point there. I think you need to develop more. But it's in the favelas, they don't go to school. Well, how are they gonna go to McDonald's? Like that is a real good question, but like how are they gonna get a job at McDonald's? So and gangs are right there. What would you do in that predicament? You gonna try to go get an education? And you, you don't even have the money to pay books or go to school or anything like that. So I mean, Alexandra it doesn't have to relate directly to this topic. Who gives you an example? So you can say what you want right, to say. Well, but I yeah. I don't know how, the, how you're going to get a job. It's hard to get a job. Like, you still have to go to school to know how to do like do stuff. You can't just go inside and be like, oh, I want a job here and this and that. What if they don't know how to fill this out and do that? Like, well, since you're on site, I know. Well, no. What she's saying is you need to make a choice to what? Exactly. Thank you. That's, I think that's what she's saying. Just help her. It does sound almost like she's like yourself. Okay, so I was trying to say something when you, like, and then you said, hold on, and then you went to them. It's okay. Yeah, I, I did. I cut her off. She was like ready, and I cut her off. I did. Sorry. So, I did. what do you think about that? You can make a choice to go to school. Yeah. What if they're not in that kind of environment? What if they're not in that circumstance to get to get to go to school? Sabi? Are, um, like most immigrants like that come like Mexicans, like they don't have jobs either and they they don't know English but they like work in the fields getting fruits and all that. You can do that. So but look at how they were treated. Yeah. So well, it's not cutting people off. Okay. So you can do something, that. right? Yeah. Really yeah. Treated. Okay. Lily, go ahead. How were they treated? They got low pay, they weren't given good environment. That's interesting. I got Maybe we're gonna do like one more minute, and we're gonna. Move That's on. better than a game. What's that? That's better than a game. Oh, low pay. Better than a game. No, better being. All right. No. Kennedy, did you have something to say for Sunday? Sort of. There, as Stephanie was saying, how you know, even immigrants under with nothing, they at least go get a job in the field, and it isn't the greatest pay, but. They can make a choice. And then Lily made a great point of saying, uh, you're not going to have great pay. You're probably not going to be treated that well. And then Angel came back. Isn't that better than being in a game? Back to you guys. It doesn't have to be Kennedy. I have a room with Tina, Jose, Daniel. Daniel, I think you could relate your example from earlier to something. Well, not really. More from the other team. But how could you turn that around? Um, well, how they came over here and they didn't have it. They came over here because they didn't have much to go to work. So, so what determined your situation? Their situation back where they came from. But being a gang makes it worse than a Once you're in a gang, you can't get out. out here. I thought being in a gang, you can't get out. It's going to make it worse. Uh -huh. try to get out because they're, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make the situation even worse. So why get in the gang? It, it's just it's not going to help. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to stop right no, there. No, this is so fun. Um, this is so great. And you know what I feel like about this most is um, it's fun. But I think it's a real subject here. I think it's about how we do our lives. And, I, and I'm happy we're she these more learning. I agree. This model is great. But the topic is great because every single one of us can relate to it. Because it affects a lot of things. Your perspective, your A or B. Man, can be the make or break for you, right? All right, okay, sounds good. Fatima is like bribing me with money over here so that she can go one more time. Can she go one more time? It'll I'll let A go one more yeah, time. Yeah. Sound good? All right, go. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know how you guys said that you guys don't have like, the environment and stuff with you? Well, there are programs that are able to help. 
looking like acting like you're a crazy animal. I mean, y'all y'all saying you can go out and get help, but who really wants like like nobody really wants to help when people that are supposed to be there to help them are the ones hurting them. But help always helps because like making it like help you make it like take you away and get you in a better better environment instead of going home being beat on and watching your mom be like you know you can get help. There are organizations for help, right? There are. It, it happens. I have students in that situation, right? Right, and they're not happy about being taken out of the environment. They understand why, you know. Like right now, I I love my parents, but right now they kind of need to handle their stuff. But how right? How do you? Right. I, I'm trying it's to, like, like, I'm trying to say this, but I don't know how to say it. Like, the person that held you in your stomach, in their stomach for nine months, and the person, that, these two people that created you, they're the ones that's supposed to help you. Like, how is, like, I don't really know what I'm trying to say here, but I'm like, I don't know how to say it. No, I, I think we get you. I think we get you. I think, yeah. Wow. I can go now, right? And that's, like, really hard. It's very like, emotional. I read a book, and she got sold into prostitution from her own parents because they were dead broke. We're gonna learn about that in India. Yeah, right. Alright, so as she said, the parents are smoking crack. Was mom smoking crack? The dad's uh, abusive. So basically, that's the parents' choice. The parents brought the kid into that environment. Why you can have a kid just to have a drug? Why you can make their life miserable? What choices would you make to make a life better? Would you either turn your parents in and try to help you survive, or would you like how how would your parents react? Like still sleep, Don Loggins is in the hallways, classrooms, and bathrooms of Burns High School, where she's a senior, and janitor. Each morning she cleans the rooms where she'll later return to learn. But that myself should be the root and father of many kings. Then come seven hours of advanced placement classes and honors classes. Then two more hours of dumping trash and picking up after her classmates. I don't mind cleaning because if you have to wade through trash to get to your desk, you're not going to have an environment that encourages learning. Finally, she tackles homework till 2 a.m. Besides being dedicated, school officials knew something else about Dawn. Life at home wasn't exactly perfect. There were the eviction notices. The family moved a lot. Burns High was Dawn's fourth school since eighth grade. When she asked about candles, her boss realized the team was living in a house with no electricity. She came to me and she said, I need something to be able to do my homework by. And I said, okay, we'll get you some candles. We'll take care of that. There was also no water. We'll get water jugs and fill them up at the park, like using the spigots in the bathroom. 
and would use that to like flush the toilet and cook with and things like that. It got worse. Last year, when Dawn tried calling home from summer school in Raleigh, the phone was disconnected. The mother and stepfather had moved again, this time leaving her behind. I never expected my parents to just, like, leave. You were homeless? Yes. Dawn would crash a few days on a couch here or a night or two on the floor there, but still cleaning and still keeping up her grades. I think what motivates me is the fact that when I was younger, I was able to to look at all the bad choices, at the neglect and the drug abuse. And I was not going to have to ask myself, am I going to buy food this month or am I going to pay rent? What makes this story so amazing isn't just Dawn Lottis. It's what the school, it's what the community did. You see, the moment it was realized that Dawn was abandoned and homeless, she should have been turned over to the state, the Department of Social Services. That didn't happen. That didn't happen on purpose. We kind of took it upon ourselves to become her village. So teachers and staffers made sure she was clothed and fed and had a place to live. The people are nice, so we have good people in Longdale. Yeah. It, it's a nice community. And it didn't end there. That same village was now out to get her to college, and not just any college, Harvard. History teacher Larry Gardner wrote the recommendation letter and simply told Dawn's story. This young lady has, unlike most of us, known hunger. She's known abuse and neglect. She's known homelessness and filth. Yet she's risen above it all to become such an outstanding young lady. Months passed. Thick acceptance letters arrived from state schools, but nothing from Cambridge. Then one day, a thin envelope with a Harvard seal arrived. So I'm delighted to report that the admissions committee has asked me to inform you that you will be admitted to the Harvard College class of 2016. I didn't jump up and down and I didn't cry or anything like that, but it did get the largest reaction out of any of my my acceptance letters. I, I sort of did, did this, like... <sighs> Not only was she accepted, but her tuition and housing would be paid for. I mean, kind of teared up because this is a young lady who... When I first met her and, and had her, her brother in class, they, they were living at home without electricity, without running water. They were showering at a, a local park. She's not let those circumstances hold her back. And, and that's going to kind of, she can be that symbol um, that she, you're able to achieve, meet your milestones, meet your goals, no matter what. And that's how Don Loggins went from homeless to Harvard. Martin Savage, CNN, Lawndale, North Carolina. Yes, no, blame it on the allergies. It's okay. All right. Blame it on the allergies. Yeah, I forgot to say my allergy pill, too. That's all it is. You know, it happens. Right? It ain't even allergy season, but whatever. Um, really quickly, before we get to this, actually, um, I want you to discuss, do a vertical share at this time. Share with them for your trio, do a trio. And I'm going to give you a few seconds to think about this question first, okay? Um, what do you think helped Dawn? Being an A person, which means her circumstance and situation, or her effort and choices? What got her to Harvard? Okay, ah, just think. You ready to kind of give an example to your neighbor? Share. Vertical share. Vertical share. Trio. Trio. Jason, if you can share with Tara. Tara, you can see the whole thing. If you can share his opinion. Tara, you don't want to share anything else, okay? Okay, thank you. Let's read a quick little story. Everybody look at your paper. Follow along. Keep in mind what you just discussed with your partner. The long story. It's right on your paper, right beneath your uh, warm-up. Once there was a teenage boy, JJ, who started his own lawn mowing service. Strong minded and ambitious guy who got along well with others. He was very good at mowing lawns and soon had three or four regular clients. 
There was a dock in the neighborhood who had a large yard and paid very well to have it mowed. JJ really wanted his business and dropped off the note, asking for a chance to earn his business by mowing his lawn the first time for free. The doctor agreed. JJ went the next day at 11 a.m. with his very best job. Not only mowing, edging it back in the grass, but he also borrowed a blower to clean the grass clippings off the sidewalk, walkway, and around the pool. When he was almost finished, the doctor came out dressed in scrubs. That's what a lot of medical uh, personnel wear, right? <clears throat> dressed in scrubs with his hair all messy and chewed out JJ. Or, that's the title, for making so much noise while he was trying to sleep. The doctor told him to leave immediately and not ever come back. JJ was confused and did not understand. How was he to know when the doctor would sleep past 11 a.m.? He talked to a friend and said, don't want that guy. However, a few hours later, JJ decided he really wanted that business. He decided to swallow his pride and try something. He wrote the doctor a letter and apologized. Dear Dr. Jones, I apologize for waking you up on Tuesday. It was my fault. I should have scheduled the day and time you wanted to come. If you give me another chance, I will do much better. Sincerely, J.J. Ross. He put the letter in the doctor's box. That night, he was surprised when the doctor knocked on the door. Knock, knock, knock. The doctor told him, I'm sorry for being so rude when you woke me up. I had just finished a 36-hour shift at the emergency room at morning at 9 a.m. Did a great job with the lawn. If you will schedule an event, you can have the business. He also insisted on paying him for the work and offered a very generous rate for future mowing. This worked out extremely well for JJ. The doctor ended up bragging about him to his neighbors and to his friends at the hospital. And soon JJ had many great clients with large yards. He ended up paying for college and a classic convertible Mustang with his name. Years later, he real realized that his letter to the doctor full responsibility was the key to his success. Interesting. Okay, here's what I want you to discuss with your crew. Okay? So, uh, this is a true story. I actually, I think I saw it on the news some years back. It's a true story. This guy made bank. He was in high school. Um, he literally started his own uh, landscaping business when he was like 16. Um, there's going to be a few questions we need to talk about. <clears throat> I don't want to make you write. I want us to keep chatting. You've been doing so good with that today. So everybody is in a group of four, right? I kind of want you to share as a whole group right now. Group. A group. A group, right? If you have three, you have three, right? And then um, I want, I'm going to tell you which person will answer which question, okay? So let me show you all the questions really quick. First question. When the doctor fired JJ, what are different things he could have done or said? What could he have done instead? What could he have done instead? Think about that for a second. Okay? What could he have done instead? All right? Can I have the person in the upper left hand corner share? Okay, to the upper right hand corner. Okay? So I'm going to have Levy, you're going to share with your group. Joe, you're going to share with your group and answer this question. Philip, you're going to share with the group. Juan, with the group. Daniel, with the group. Angel, with the group. Okay? Take a few more seconds. Everybody lean towards that person. Answer the question. What could he have done instead? Go. What could he have done instead? Did he have to write the letter? Did he have to write the letter? Okay, thank you. Next question. New person. If that had happened to you, if you were JJ, you got chewed out by the doctor. Think about how angry you'd be for real. Be like, are you serious? Okay. <laughs> what do you think you would have done for a sit? Okay. So I'm gonna have Michelle go this time. Five not go with your group. Shelly go with your group. And today go with your group. Stephanie go with your group. Alexander goes to your group. Everybody listen. Go. Turn to each other. 
Answer the second question. What would you have done if you were JJ? What would you have done? Ask us when we face the group, please. What would you have done? What do you think? What would you have done? Oh, sorry, you go. Thank you. Give us a chance to chair. The chair. The chair. Okay, the chair. Uh, I'll make Okay. So, like, if you were JJ and had come out and just worked with the lawn super hard, so I were, if you were JJ and had just like, no, 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 I've tried to sleep. What would you have told them? What would you have told me? What would you have done? Would you have been bad? Yeah, would you, would you like, go off, go crazy on them? No. just... Okay, maybe just try to talk to him first. That's actually good. He did talk to him, huh? Good point. Alexandria just made a good point. Can everyone's attention? Alexandria just made a good point. He didn't try to talk to him. Like, maybe he would have been like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just trying to move on. Like, you asked. You know, maybe he could have calmed him down. That's a really good point, Alexandria, right? Instead of being like, what? You know, right, Matt, right? <laughs> you know, you could have been like, I'm sorry, sir. I I absolutely agree to you. You know, kind of like calm, and he, you know, he he eventually apologizes too once he calmed down. <laughs> how everybody, whole class. How did JJ's choice affect his outcome and opportunities? He got money. And he got money. Uh, he got college. He got college. Business. Credit. Dollars. Reputation, education, we got the package. Can you? I mean, and 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 honestly though, do you think? Let's say he wouldn't have sent the letter. Do you think JJ could have still had a chance to have a yeah. successful life? Yeah. yeah. Nope. Then it would have become an obstacle now. I would have right? Maybe. Yeah. Well, that's right. Uh huh. So it's not like he's like, what's the time he's going to have other spots? There you go. He maybe wouldn't have given up, right? He just had his. Yeah. Right. But I really think it's an interesting point that to make here that this moment kind of put him on the path immediately, right? Maybe he would have found the path. You know, we all make mistakes, right? But, you know, maybe he still would have found the path, but this got him on it right then and there. He got respect, he got clients, he got trust from someone, you, you set, right? All right. I'm gonna read to you this quote, and I think it's interesting. When I first read it, I was like, ah, oh, really? I'm gonna actually turn off the lights, I know the white font is kinda funny. And then I'm gonna, I want your opinion on this really quick. Let me turn on both, actually. There we go. No true freedom. How do you find true freedom in your life? Freedom. Mm. True freedom is taking full responsibility for your life. Huh. People who believe they are victims believe that everyone has it in it for them, instead of recognizing their attitude, choices, and their problems. They wait for things to change instead of creating change. They whine and complain to people who often cannot help. And they change only when they have to. Worst of all, they have given away control of their life to outside chance and robbed themselves of motivation and joy. Hmm. Kind of harsh, but kind of true. Um, what does this quote mean? Anybody want to yell out? What do they think this quote means? I didn't get it. I didn't it's kind of long. Maybe, how about we tackle it piece by piece? Yes. Okay, piece by piece. Okay? Taking full responsibility. You take full responsibility for everything in your life. Are you going to blame others for things? No. Now, let's put this in perspective. A bit. Go ahead, Lisa. Can I sum up the whole thing? Can you what? Sum up the whole thing? Go ahead. All right. Basically, it says that, like, um, People who don't believe themselves and think that they can do better, they're just going to let everybody stomp all over them. They're not going to try to do anything else. And people who, um, people who think that they can do better, they're going to 
Interesting. I think you add a little bit in of, in, in of your opinions, but I think that's fine, right? At the end of the day, I think this is about choosing to have a good life, right? Choosing to not let things hold you down. Because if something holds you down, whether it's your family, that's true for a lot of people, your neighborhood, your friends, other things, if you let those things hold you down, and we are we saying it's easy to be in a rough family? No. Are we saying that? No. Better not be, because it wasn't easy for me. <laughs> okay? Are we saying it's easy to maybe be in a bad neighborhood? We're not saying that. We're not saying it's easy. We're just saying, are you going to choose to blame those things and just kind of give up your freedom? Like, like he said, like, are you going to do something about it? Right? I really want to be careful with this because I, I, I like this quote, but at the same time, I don't want people to think like, Oh, well, they don't know my situation. I'm not being very sensitive. I'm not saying that. Okay? I'm not saying that. There are some incredibly difficult situations that maybe some of you have had. Okay? Maybe it's so difficult you still can even talk about it. But at the end of the day, do you want freedom? Do you want choices to try to do something with yourself despite that horrible, awful situation? That is out of your control. You didn't ask for adults to make bad choices around you, right? You didn't ask for the game fingers to move in next to you, right? You didn't ask for your parents to be struggling to pay the rent all the time. You didn't ask for that. But sometimes that's the way it is. And can you choose to try to do something better for you? I think that's the topic you can